Hi, I'm Dan Hedges with Engineering.com here with Larry Price from Lockheed Martin. Larry, welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, tell me about the Orion Space Program. So the Orion Program is a phenomenal capability to take humans into the solar system. We're able to follow what the great astronomical telescopes have done first, and then the robotic missions, say, that are going to Mars or exploring the other satellites or other planets. We'll be able to now follow them with humans because humans can do things that you can't pre-plan into an instrument. They can think on the job and you don't have the time delay of long transmission, say, from Mars. So we're building a multi-purpose system that can do all these different missions, chase asteroids, go to neutral gravity points, and eventually go to Mars. Okay, what are some, what are some of the other points that we can go to uh, beyond low Earth orbit? Because we've been stuck in low Earth orbit for quite a while. So low Earth orbit, the, like the shuttle is a marvelous machine, the space station is a marvelous capability, a million pounds of laboratory in orbit, but it is just 300 miles above the surface, and a globe of the Earth, 8,000 miles, that's like a quarter of an inch. So it's like I heard a story that if, if uh, Columbus was going to be set out to discover the new world, he, the way we're discovering the universe, he would build a raft 200 yards offshore and declare he was discovering the new world. So we've done marvelous things in low Earth orbit. The space station is going to enable us to learn how to work and live in, the, in neutral gravity and the vacuum of space. But now we need the machine that can go beyond that. Back to the moon and the neutral gravity points around the moon go to asteroids, you're learning a lot today about all the benefits of knowing about an asteroid, and eventually the moons of Mars and then Mars, by being a small vehicle that has this multi-purpose capability and a collaboration with the Europeans to build the propulsion section. So it's an international um, capability that's led by the United States. So you mentioned that this is a multi-purpose vehicle. How did you deliver the, uh, the multi-purpose aspect of the mission? So for example, the Apollo program for Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo, learning how to operate in space, it was designed to go to the moon and come back, land on the moon and come back. With that experience, we're designing this vehicle to be doing all of these other interesting scientific missions, like neutral gravity points, back to the moon, low Earth orbit even, but to uh, the moons of Mars and then Mars. So one thing to do with that is to try to minimize the amount of consumables that the spacecraft requires for duration. So an example of that is solar arrays rather than fuel cells, so we don't have to carry fuel for the fuel cell, and you can just adjust the solar array so an infinite amount of, of uh, power. Um, other consumables you have to tailor to whatever the mission is, and for example, rocket propellant, we need to have enough propellant, will probably in the architecture be delivered out to a trajectory to go to a distant place. But we're designed to be totally contained so we can do a safe return, whether there's an emergency aboard or just nominal return. So we carry the rocket propellant to be able to return the vehicle back to Earth. And we'll adjust the size of all of those so that we can do all these missions without uh, building a new vehicle. And about how much rocket propellant does a capsule of this size need? Well, we carry about 17,000 pounds of fuel. The whole vehicle weighs about 60,000 pounds, so it's about a third fuel. Because the whole the whole game, right, is to take it, to get out into low Earth orbit on the launch vehicle, and then there you're about half the energy, half the velocity of anywhere in the universe. However, it took you 95 percent of the weight of the rocket on the ground. So now you have to be very elegant about the physics of how you use the other gravitational bodies to move around in the solar system. So there are other propulsion techniques like ion drive and, and things to try to improve the efficiency of in-space propulsion. Mm -hmm. But they are very low thrust levels. Right. And one of the real breakthroughs we could have is in, we don't have dilithium crystals yet. No. Okay. So it would be really great to have propulsion capabilities. But we're building a machine that will be able to be evolved to accommodate different propulsive te te technologies. Solar cells, for example, when the cell efficiency, efficiency improves, like computer chips are improving about every, doubling about every two years, solar cells are improving. We can put the newer generation solar cells on. So it's designed to be very adaptable. So you've heard about the asteroid retrieval mission. Yep. It's a very intriguing mission to go perform. Um, that could be first. We could do some other things around the moon. The point is that we can do a lot of things with the same machine without redesigning it significantly. Thank you very much, Larry.